Hello and welcome to What We're Watching. I'm Catherine. And I'm Ed. And John. So here we go. I'm going to oh, start. Wait, hold on. Oh, what? Just the three it? of us. No. It's only, where's, where's our uh, fourth and most famous uh, other podcaster? Liz, she burp, burp, burp. is probably watching something right now. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> She's getting prepared for She's the next round. She's busy watching something, all right, I would all guess. Right. I don't know. Okay, so I want to start. Well, I guess I don't have to start. Can I start? Why don't you start? Okay, what a good idea. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad I could just lean into it, right? It's improv. Yes, and? Yes, so. and my turn. Okay, so I finished Outer Range. Anyone else watching Ooh. Outer Range? <sighs> you know? Okay. An upside down mountain range with the Brolin just being all uh, like bristly and cowboy in front of it. I am a hundred percent into it. I have not fired it up yet. Okay, so here's what happened. That's, you know, that's the just the image that goes with it. <laughs> yeah, I was not sure that it had a sci-fi weird element, which it does. Yes. And when I finally figured that out, I'm like, oh, okay, now I can watch it because I'm like, I, I mean. I don't really want to watch cowboy stuff. I don't know. That's just not my main. So I haven't really. I mean, that's 100% a lie. You like a nice, good looking cowboy, but whatever. You're not into like the theme of cowboy (laughs) shows. But like if a nice, Uh, if a cowboy showed up and something you were watching, be like, oh, look at that dude. I have nothing against cowboys. Correct. But this for sure had a very cowboy heavy content. I'm like, oh, there's also going to be bull riding and they are on a ranch. This is a lot of cowboy hats and cowboy boots. And I'm not sure. Oh, wait, there might be a pit that goes somewhere we don't know. All right. I can watch it now. Oh, oh, cowboys and a pit. I'm in. (laughs) I don't know if they really want to call it a pit. But anyway. Um, okay, so yes, Josh a Brolin. Uh, well, that was what I was afraid of. I'm like, is this just going to be they found a sinkhole or is it oil or like is it something like otherworldly? Is it a time pocket of another universe? I'm not going to say what it well, is. Well, I'm guessing at things. I don't know what's happening. But it is otherworldly, which I am very like, okay, yeah. I'm in. What are we doing? All right. Now, I did not do much investigating before I just started watching, which is, you know, classic, a good move, in my opinion. I was very excited to find that Lily Taylor was in it and she plays Josh Brolin's wife and is great. Love her. Love seeing her doing things and being on things. Oh, it's on Amazon Prime, just in case Uh, I haven't said that, which I'm pretty sure I haven't. So Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Awesome. Eight episodes. I am 99% sure I have clocked that properly. It is eight episodes. Oh, Calm thank down. thank God. I mean, <laughs> my track record lately has been so bad of getting confused. Well, it's hard to keep track of how many things we're watching. We're watching as many things as we watch, and then you like burn through an entire series. You're like, I don't know. Were they half hours or 45s? What or was it? What was I doing? Were they yeah. really crushing it at 56 minute episodes <laughs> with no commercial break built in? And my brain was like melting. I made it through two. Yeah. So these were hour ish, very moody, mm. but really good. Another casting fun person, Noah Reed from Schitt's Creek, who played the okay. boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Playing a very different character. He's got range, uh, he's got an yeah, outer this, range. he's very very creepy which is great also will Patton, who's great he's an older dude that you'd recognize i don't know off the top of my head from what but he's great gone in 60 seconds oh really i don't know i mean that that was the first thing i can think of there you go. And then no, and he's poss- great, is he's uh, Armageddon or uh, no, it was it uh, oh, there, was a, there was a car there was a car one uh, gone in 60 seconds. Shut I up. didn't look I didn't click on it. I had a couple with my brain. Wait, but uh, uh, that's he what I just said. said it. Listen. <laughs> I wasn't listening to John. I was staring, I was trying to figure out who you were talking about. Uh, you can't is, listen and do research and at the same time. After he said it, it was gone from my brain in 60 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. <laughs> apparently, uh, I mean, he was leading you astray because he is also in Yellowstone, apparently. So. Oh, Yellowstone. Uh, well, I was going to say Yellowstone is the type of cowboy show that I don't want to watch because it's just a cowboy ranch drama. You might be a lot speaking of people too soon, love it. But you should, we should just move off the topic. Okay, why? What? are Because you... I think it isn't just cowboys. Oh, wow. Because, I mean, as far as I know, having not watched it. Yellowstone? Well, it definitely doesn't have like a a, yeah, a, a I, I secret pit that doesn't have oil in it. 
oh, that I might be a didn't pocket say that universe. It was, but we should okay. we should talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. What are you talking about? Yellowstone totally has like Old Faithful. It's a secret pit full of steam. <laughs> Sometimes, maybe, who knows? Where's it coming from? Any who's it? Um, also, I really liked Imogen Potts. Imogen Poots. Sure. And yes, Why? that is because she's acted a lot. Okay, she, she, I don't know her at all. That's all right. How did you know how to say it, and where did you know her from? She's been in a ton of things of, you know, 20 and 30-something rom-com whatevers. I don't know. I'm sure there's been some more serious in there. Uh, well, definitely 28 weeks later, I would have seen her, but I didn't remember her from that. Yeah, that's a long time ago. I don't remember what she did in that. Yeah, she's, I don't know, she's been in a ton of stuff. Well, she's great in this. Oh, roadies. Okay. I, I never got to finish uh, watching that series. <gasps> you know what? Oh, my God. You are right. That yeah. is actually where I know her from. It's like it's Rodies. like a, it's like a, a really good long run at a, a character that she like really yeah. owned. Yeah. And outside of that, there have been shorter. She was sort of like the PA equivalent mm-hmm. on roadies. Yeah. I mean, I you know, I'm equating it to television production instead of, you know. Being on the stage and which being a She's ro- just a roadie. Roadie. Which right. is what it's called. <laughs> I, but I have to give it a different name. Cause but maybe, maybe not... roadie is like literally short for a road production assistant and they just drop all of that and go, roadie. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. We don't know anything about that. We don't. That's not cool. our... But you were great in that, and I remember. Yeah, I remember her from that, for sure. That's my clicking point for her. But she was great in this, and I liked her a lot. Anyway, so Outer Range. Very much recommend it. It was very cool. Has a good look, good vibe. I looked up that they are going to have a second season, so that's good. I don't think we know when that's happening. That's uh, That's what I got on that. I also wanted to bring up, I just watched the second season of Made for Love on HBO Max. It's really interesting. Eight episodes, two seasons, so 16 episodes. They're like half hour-ish. John, you probably love this main actress. I don't know how to say her name. She was in Palm Springs. How would you say it? I'm going to say Christine... Melody. I Melo- don't know. Mo- yeah, okay. She, sure. uh, she was in Wolf of Wall Street. That was a big out oh, for her. I didn't um, see that. Yeah, I mean, you shouldn't. But... Uh, <laughs> Correct. Then she had, a, I think, a more fun moment, obviously, in Palm Springs. Um, but yeah, I, I keep seeing that poster on HBO Max's uh, app, and I'm always like, I like you. I don't know. I'm not going to watch it right now. It's uh, really worth watching, I think. Well, first of all, I really liked her in Fargo. She had a season where she was a main character in Fargo, and she was fantastic. Probably one you watched without me. Good job. Probably. But, you know, you don't like anthologies. So, anyway. Uh, that is I, right. I've watched I've two made seasons that season of yet. Fargo with you guys. Oh, so. geez. Uh-oh. Well, who, right. What's more important to who? Got it? All right. I'm in um, trouble. Okay. But I think the other strange thing is this is another one. Uh, I mean, look, you see that image, mm-hmm. not poster, because it's digital. Uh, what They call it key art sometimes. Yeah. No, thanks. Okay. But... <laughs> um, And it's very, it's pretty simple, but you're like, okay, well, don't they have another show about love? Like, is this the same show? Love Life? Yeah. Love Life. Sorry. Might be that. But this one secretly also has science fiction elements, apparently. Well, science fiction in like a futuristic sense. Yes. But I mean, like. Not science fiction enough for you? Not science fiction fantasy. So, like, I guess, you know. Near near future tech. Right, near future tech. That's good. Meaning, like, I was just talking about outer range, and there's definitely something that's going on that is sci-fi-ish, but fantasy. It's not something real. Where this is just technology that is, you know, expanded on the idea of where it could go and what it could be, and of course, it's nefarious. It reminds me a little bit of Upload in that sense. Well, she was in Black Mirror, so. Was she? Uh, According to her IMDb. Oh, okay. I don't know what episode she was in then. That's interesting. I can't keep all of them in my head at all times. Cause Nor should you. That show is not the future we want. Thanks for not, writing that uh, down yeah, so now we can all avoid that. No. Okay, so uh, also in this show, Ray Romano. Really such a great performance from him. He's fun and kind of curmudgeon but good heart to him. He's doing a great job. I really have enjoyed his performance. It's a dark idea, kind of, but handled in a fun, quirky, funny way. Again, sort of like Upload. Reminding me, not exactly tone-wise, Upload, but similar-ish. 
continue, but if you don't name someone else, I'm <laughs> going to have to bring it up. Okay, go for it. Billy Magnuson? Yeah, why are you excited about him? Uh, and look, he's fantastic in this. Sure. I mean, look, we're all waiting for Aladdin 2, where his strange what? What? Uh, Scandinavian prince plays a more important role. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what are you talking about? Aladdin, the movie, or the, well, the live action remake okay. from a couple years Didn't ago. Didn't watch it. Yeah. That would be I'm, the problem. You don't watch things. We know. Um <laughs> Also, he was in Game Night and was very fun. Oh, I didn't see Game Night and I meant to. I, I actually have wanted to rewatch that for like two years solid. It is rocking <laughs> on TBS on demand and I have no access. Um, but there's also, there's one or two other things. He's very fun. He actually, oh, he was in something oh, kind of And serious. he was in Black Mirror in USS Callister. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. Was he? Uh, yeah, Holy he wasn't the main crap. guy because that's, uh, what's his name from, um, oh, I'm, I'm going to completely blank. Um, Jesse Plems. Yes, thank Plem, you very Plem, much. Plems? Plemons. Plemons. Plem yeah. Plemons. Nailed it. We Plemons. crushed that. Plemons. Plemons. Okay, Plemons, I all believe. right. Um, Let's have an argument about it. No, but like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah, no, I I, I didn't the have Callister his name The Callister episode in, was so good. Oh, guy. my God. He's... You know, is frequently playing a funny character and kind of a blustery, sure, whatever sure. type mm -hmm. character. So then even when you see him and he hasn't done something funny yet, you know, you're reading the comedy into it. So he was on uh, Maniac, which we started. We did start it. He's the brother. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I kept like, he's going to be funny. And, and he, he wasn't only... not funny. He yeah. was actually mildly not terrible so it was fine and i but for me it, there was a more of a comic element because that's what i know of him i want to get back to maniac did we only watch like three episodes i think so yeah that's it criminal was, it, well it was a rough one why it was interesting know, and weird no, oh. that's what you say now oh am i not remembering properly no we were just, it was one of those ones where like oh you watch 40 minutes you're like i'm good for two months <laughs> That was that was serious. <laughs> okay, I have no idea how to say this comedic actor's name. Dan Backendall? Oh, that guy. Oh my gosh. He's so amazingly great cuz he was in Veep, right? Yeah, he, um, he was just uh, the biggest jerk in Veep. He's fantastic in this. There's multiple other cast members that I just really enjoy. Apparently he was a correspondent on The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. I didn't oh, know really? That. Yeah, hmm. makes sense. I'm sure he was, I mean, that's, he was following the Lewis Black, well, he could have been following the Lewis Black outrage train. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. I'm so jealous that you can just like sit there and read things so fast and just like say it. It's amazing to me. I get all tangled up. I can barely... <laughs> navigate uh, well you know so you know uh, it's a different dyslexia pops up in weird ways anyway all um, right he's also in community which is not one of my go-to's well look it's great there's currently 16 episodes hbo max is doing this weird thing or hbo or whatever where they haven't greenlit a bunch of things that people think that they should uh, our flag means death is coming to mind. That's been going on for a while that people are really shocked that they haven't said that they're going to do a second season. So I don't know what's happening, but we don't have a yes on a third season, but I'm really hoping so. Get to it, HBO. Get to it, HBO. <laughs> I was kind of shocked. I thought, like Love Life, if we're getting that right, that it was uh, this was another one of my problems with the show that I was like, is it like the other show and it's a different main character from season to season? Because then I'm definitely going to think more and not do it sooner what made for love or yeah, love life but it yeah. wasn't um so i was uh yeah love life we are getting it right by the way um so i am that makes me almost uh, i don't know maybe they'll do a third season that's it's gonna be tough to get her i feel like we'll see i don't know i mean she's great so we'll see i i mean this is great for her she's doing an amazing job and it's kind of a meaty fun character for her so and, you know, eight episodes, you hope that, like, you can squeeze that into your schedule. Come on, HBO. All right. Anyway, so um, that's what I've been sort of up to. I'm also watching um, Hacks, which is in progress. I'll have to update you all on that when we are closer to the dropped. end. Yeah. God, it's really good, though. I do love Hacks. But it, that's on, like, uh, Hulu and, like, dropping 
or where is that? No, that is also HBO Max, but it oh, is also it a very slow rollout. Got like it, I, it, you know, it. it's from week to week. It's driving me insane. It's very slow. It's once a week. Once a week. It's <laughs> too slow. Well, I think what had happened with Made for Love is I didn't realize there was a second season, so a bunch of them were out. So I mm. only had to wait for a couple to finish up. Yeah, that's there like the uh, that's not quite the uh, the the classic binge watch. Uh, that's like the uh, oh. Let me just time this out perfectly and roll into the end of an entire season and then go, wait, I have to wait three months for a whole new season? <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, hard well. when you're really into it and then you're like, wait, what? It's over and I have no idea when I'm getting more and oh, yeah, yeah, this is horrible. I've said this uh, somewhere else, but um, there were benefits to the network schedule. Uh, you know, it made sense in some ways. We got a lot. And all through the school year. So then, then you get more the next year. And then Correct. you get more the next year. Correct. If it's good. Should I add a detail that's not important? Mm, absolutely. Billy Magnuson was also in uh, The Big Short, uh, which I have conflicted oh. feelings about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was, along with Max Greenfeld from uh, New Girl, when they went down to Florida and they were like, we need to see what the deal is down here. What's going on with this subprime mortgage thing going on? And they meet these like, oh, so you're a mortgage, uh, you you know, mortgage officer or whatever to Max Greenfield. He's like, yeah, you know, I give to whoever. And then he's like, but you really got to talk to. And then Billy Magnuson was like, I give them away. So, oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> it was a very small part. But but sometimes it's memorable. That's funny that you remember him. Well, I I've, I've have an appreciation for him, apparently. So. Apparently. Yeah. yeah, he's great. Well, also very handsome young that man. That has nothing to do with it. Well, for me, that was a real clinching. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. I mean, it is good when, uh, you know, handsome people make buffoons of themselves. So that's part, that of, is, part of the That enjoyable... honestly is one of my favorite archetypes, yeah. an extremely handsome person being kind of a befuddled. You need yeah. to see Game Night. Okay. <laughs> because that is all, right. all that he does. I'm going to put so that good. on my list. Like uh, a You cl- can a watch it. You have Grant. Yes, you're fine. TBS, do they have like a streaming service? Yeah. Like, what's their deal? Well, well right, whatever. If you go through it. your cable. Oh yeah, that's it should true. Should be sitting there. Oh my gosh, I, I better. I think I can get on. Although it right away. I have looked at various times, and sometimes it isn't. So I could be well, giving look, bad advice. We can do it together. If you've been dying sure. to watch it, is that That'll okay? That'll happen. He, all right, Mrs. I have so much TV to watch. I know that's true, and we actually have a thousand things on our list. Oh my God, our Better Call Sauls are just piling. We're up. getting there. Well, no, you wait two years per season. Oh my God, it's so bad. We'll be done in 2025. <laughs> Go get your full uh, 22 episode season. Season's built up first, then you can watch it. I get nervous that our cable box is gonna get corrupted, and Stop we're gonna. Stop being so nervous. All right, okay, all right. That's it for me. <sighs> I mean, for now. Okay, good job. Is that is that enough? Yeah, sure. Just half the show. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for covering. Um, I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna jump right in, and I'm dragging my brother John into this one with me because we watched Vacation Friends together. Um, that? Oh, that's true. We did. <laughs> what is that? And John it was on Cena, your favorite. Hulu. Uh, and it was John Cena and his co-star and wife. Yes, John Cena's wife. Meredith Hagner, who plays Kayla. That couple is on a, a vacation on another, a whole, not even another level. They're on a vacation on another planet. <laughs> <laughs> so the the premise of Vacation Friends is your main character Lil Rel and Yvonne Ori. Oh, uh, I love Lil Rel. They are a couple. Uh, they're going on vacation, and uh, you know, however, all vacation slash couples slash if you've ever been with anyone where you're splitting bills, it's just like there's budgets, there's concerns. You're trying to get the hookup. You're trying to make things get squared away. John, did they get into the lobby? They're at the front desk when the movie gets off into the proper direction of festive yeah, fun times. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think it's, I forget where the movie starts. If it's like before they leave, there's already Oh, it's vacation. like on the plane. It's like Lil Rel and his wife, are Yvonne, are like not on the same page as far no. as vacation. Yeah. And then once they get to the hotel and the concierge, that's when, well, no, on the way because they see... Uh, this future friends, this other uh, couple yes. out in the ocean, being completely <laughs> ridiculous, like li- doing something that would get them hurt, and in movie land is not. Yes, in in uh, in the fantasy version of if you ran into John Cena and Meredith, if you ran into them actually on vacation, in these characters, 
this would be the movie. You would come back from this and you'd be telling this story. This would be like, oh my God, I met these people. The first scene that you see them in, that should be the end of their story. That should be where everyone's was like, yep, and we did that and then we got put into jail. Oh, geez. <laughs> so they definitely up the level of the entire vacation for the couple the whole time. And, you know, in a classic any couple off vacation, stuff goes down, there's drama there's potential i mean not exactly in a classic <laughs> vacation sense i mean you're, you're talking about you know true almost like the movie's vacation to a slight degree this is or any uh, absolutely crazy stuff happening yeah you know led by john and meredith wait did you couple. say where we can see this what's the uh, hulu, it's on hulu, he said, yeah. Yeah. oh hulu yeah. hulu Catherine, he said it already i know but that's because i got distracted looking yeah, up what were you meredith? reading about <laughs> okay you so know her from search party i do know her from search party <laughs> nice. she was great in do search remember party her in palm Springs? She's the girlfriend. That's a good oh, leg. Oh, God, you're right. <laughs> Although, I, I swear she looks like a different person, because in that, you think she's not 5'3". She is 5'3", and in other places, she seems 5'3". Yeah, so. she <laughs> is a tiny person. Like, yeah. you can see that in Search Party. And what's most important to you is that she's married to Wyatt Russell. Oh, my God! How dare you? I was going to say that. I didn't think you would care. I just saw it right now. And <laughs> I was like, one of my the of, Well, I saw a picture of them oh, together. And I was like, what? I forgot because of your lo- Lodge 49 love. That's my, why you love him. How, wait, of, co- of course. I how know, did you not put that, that together? That. Well, how dare you? From Sorry. what? Everything. Wyatt Russell. He's the greatest. Yep. Lodge 49, still one of my all-time faves. I know. It's such a delight. Yeah. Oh, God. Bring it back. But anyway, she is very good in this. She's, I mean, John and her are playing different crazy people. So now I have two yes. movies I need to see. Oh, and, but they oh, sound forgot, very fun. I forgot their extra storyline where they're like, no. <laughs> We're gonna, it's gonna be great. You're like, what? That's where the story's going? Oh, wait. Okay. It comes back down from that. <laughs> okay. Don't spoil it. Exactly. Can't I don't spoil know. things. The but... only thing I, I will say yeah. is that it's not all vacation, but the craziness continues. It brought me back to the kind of original experience that you had, or maybe you had, I don't know if everyone had this, for like a hangover one. Hangover two was a repeat. But Hangover 1, you kind of got in on like, oh, there was a party. We missed out. What's happening? This was, you're in on this party. And you're like, wow. It's crazy. Someone should have bailed at some point. (laughs) Someone is going to end up on a roof somewhere. This would be like doing the Hangover in real time with them. Then actually having that movie afterwards where they're like, yeah, they made it back. And there there were still things happening. So Mm -hmm. highly recommend. Very enjoyable. Lots of fun characters. Yeah. I'm in. It's, I'm very excited. Yes. I feel like not a lot of people talked about it. So you I see don't it remember on Hulu it at all. And you're like, that's probably bad. It isn't bad. I no, didn't. I, I yeah. like usually I'll remember at least promotional campaigns or whatever. I don't remember this at all. That's Thing, streaming things for happen. you. Things happen. They either don't have the money for it. They do have the money for it. They're like, whatever. We'll wait three years for it to be a critical hit. Then, you, then we'll re-release it. Yeah, not to, of course, go back. <laughs> but uh, Meredith Hagner, do you remember her and set it up? I don't remember what she was. I don't. Mm. I mean, I love Set It Up. That was yeah. a great movie. So she's probably a great little piece of it that we're forgetting. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway. look, she's fantastic. Yeah. So I'm very excited. I mean, That's they, now on my list, too. Darn just, it. Just uh, as reference to Wyatt and reference to yeah. Lodge 49, mm-hmm. the fact that they named their child Buddy is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> they have a child named Buddy? <laughs> yep. In real, oh. In real life. That is his name. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Okay. Dud. Dud named him Bud. Oh, I know. We need more Lodge 49, but Lodge anyway. Lodge 49 was the greatest. Okay. Uh, John. Oh, wait. I, oh, what? Mm, I think, I'm, I don't know if I can do this fast enough, but apparently uh, Meredith Hagner also got her start on As the World Turns. What? Yes. That and doesn't seem like her vibe at all, because she's such a comedian. I think it's because actors need to work. Well, but, they um, absolutely do. Uh, I don't begrudge them any job that and they have to take I, or want to take. I saw this after we had moved on, but guess who also did As the World Turns? Billy, Billy Magnus. Magnus. Yeah, just, like I, I, I thought I saw all of that. There it is. There you go. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Okay. Wow. All right. I'm not going to say anything else for Whatever you bring up has to be connected to all of the other stuff that we've already brought up perfectly, just like these have been so far. I mean, these... Let's see. (laughs) Uh, It's on you, John. Definitely not. Uh Uh, I did notice there is actually a small crossover character from Vacation Friends. He plays a minor role in the movies. Unfortunately, I am going to double up this time uh, in in a rarity, but uh, there is a crossover with casting. So anyway, getting to it. Yeah, get I to it. Also, Hulu's The Valet. 
Oh, oh the ballet! Oh, I right. just I just was watching mm-hmm. the promotional stuff about it, the trailer and a couple little interviews and what have you. You know, I'm very excited about it. it looks very very cute. It is cute. It's good. Uh, now look, I love the original French one. Sure. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah. that's what it was. That yeah. was for me one of those. I I don't, I don't think I'm wrong, but I think it was a random streaming find that was like. Sure. What is this random? Uh, fine. I'll watch. Oh my god, it's great. There's, oh, that was really? definitely like uh, in the theater going days of like I was paying attention to Lemley and what was actually coming out in those. That was one one of the ones where if I caught that in the theater back in the day, I wouldn't be surprised. But for sure, I was maybe just tacking off of the actual theater and be like, well, where am I going to find this to view? I'll go rent it. So the French one I mean, is it available, or how did you see uh, that? Right now, you can you can only rent it digitally uh, ah, in mm-hmm. America. Um, so un- they are not allowing you to stream both. What a bunch easily. of jerks! Although apparently I missed it, as this isn't our market. But there was a remake already of it. Uh, so that was exciting. <laughs> what? Yes. Um, well, you know it happens. Uh, and there was actually two spinoffs from that. So there you go. It, it was a. Hindu movie in 2009, and then 2014, there's a Punjabi film, and then in 2016, there's a Bengali movie. Wow. wow. Okay, wow. Well, I don't That's know. I, I missed all that. But now we have this new one. And, you know, you have uh, the same guy, well, not the same guy, I hesitate to mention this, but uh, Eugenio Debrez, uh, who did that remake of Overboard. Yes. Right. Uh-huh. Another mm-hmm. a second remake for him. Although... It's funny because it what you say remake and it's like this is the same deal. It's like well that was a quote unquote beloved eighties classic. This is a two thousand six French movie, so very different. Say la vie. Oh, good job. <laughs> um, what I didn't realize, I think I looked this up a long time ago, but the director of the French movie, Francis Weber, he's had eight of his movies that's either written or directed been remade, including uh, the Birdcage. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, so wow. He's actually quite a and dinner for schmucks. That was another one. What? He, yeah. So he's he's a wow. That is so interesting. And I will say because it's funny, the original, uh, the 2006 valet, which was actually, I there's a lot of names here, people. I'm gonna ruin Just go for all it. of them. It's gonna be perfect. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> it's they you see you know as. The subtitles are so irritating when you can like I just heard a word that you didn't put in the subtitle. What are you doing to me? But anyway, so they show <laughs> it's, you missed the contact. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I I wanted to remember, but I can't. But it was like a name, and it was like they listed like three names, and they give you like one in the subtitle. Was like I heard that other name. Where did it go? <laughs> uh. Anyway, but they even show the French title, which is La Doubleur, which is like the stand-in because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it makes sense in the story, but. Then they just, for the American audience, named it The Valet. So now, also, now we get the remake, The Valet. Anyway, what I was going to say is it's only, it's an hour 25. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's tight uh, comedy right there. And the remake, two hour, three minutes. Hey. So it does make sense because, like, I don't know if every combination of remakes is going to be exactly the same from his movies. But I feel like, yes, he is writing a very tight, economical script and movie that you're, like, can easily, like, oh, well, that didn't have all this extraneous stuff I don't need right. that I can't figure out how to adapt. It's like, no, I can just take that and make it again. Mm-hmm. Apparently that's what he's known for. So Very interesting. So anyway, I, I did have to watch it again, and I did love it. Uh, Gad Mila, who, you know, he's big in France and many other things, <laughs> including a small part in Midnight in Paris. So I love him. Also, the, another big French comedian, Danny Boone, is his like best friend and like schlub, because they're both kind of mm. both supposed to be schlubby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he got to be, in Murder Mystery, he's that like inspector. Mm. <laughs> inspector Delacroix. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Blowing the smoke ring. So we've seen him a little bit, too. And in the original, is also Kristen Scott Thomas. She plays the wife who is being cheated on, but oh. who is very smart and also... He, it's funny, there are so many things that are the same from from one to the other. So, like, in both of them, it's that the guy's wife, so the guy is cheating, but it's the wife kind of had the money in the company. So right, there's right. a big, like, well, she's got, like, 50% or 60%, and I have to make maneuvers because if I'm going to divorce her, it's going to be a huge problem. And, like, who really is a billionaire? It's like, oh, okay. And the wife is very smart in both. Um, unfortunately, the wife, Betsy Brandt, in the new one, does not get as much time. But it oh. is she's fulfilling the same role. It goes just as well. But... She's great. She's from Breaking Bad, right? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. She, I, I, having not seen some of those things, was not as familiar with her. But yeah, she was very good. So it's Betsy Brant and Max Greenfield is the cheater. Yes. Got it. And uh, it's, you know, it is... Schmidt. 
I know. And he there are, he never does a true Schmidtism, but there are some like, you know, his jaw kind of moves a little extra. Well, and he has that high energy movement that he does. Well, I'm I'm am refining it too, like mm-hmm. cuz when he would do those crazy pronunciations on New Girl, it was like sometimes you could like see his face doing it. Uh, sure. But then sometimes it was just also like he's has an expressive whole face, mm-hmm. so even it was pronounced normally. So that happened a couple times. But it, he was good, and it's funny. I wonder if it's almost a similar type of uh, age gap because in the original it's you know looks like an obviously 50s to 60 something mm-hmm. but the top model uh is you know she's probably like late 20s or 30 mm-hmm. whereas now it's, it feels like samara weaving you know she looks freaking 22 or something yeah, she she's looks so very young, young. Mm-hmm. and then max greenfield is like okay mid 40s but in the end those are like the same age gap <laughs> from <laughs> movie to movie even though they look different um Samara was great that is where they added I mean not to be rude but they added a ton of backstory and it makes sense because I mean in the original she references like falling in love with a you know married man or a person who's taken is sad and you know my life as a you know as this celebrity is mm, I don't know if they even really go to lonely but like it's not as quite what you think you know they mm-hmm. definitely reference that but in the new one you get a lot of that and you really see it and they really slam it home. She's like, I spent Thanksgiving with my assistant and, you know, she's calling her friends to celebrate and it's like her assistant who she's taking away from some family event and then her PR person and then that's it. So then she reaches back out to the mm-hmm. ballet. So yeah, and I mean, you know, obviously you remember Samara from being the zookeeper in Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, so no, I didn't remember what? her from How, that. What? That I, was a very funny piece. I had... I, you've, you've forgotten that movie? Is that what happens? Well, probably. I was going to say, I didn't watch Nine Perfect Strangers, but I know that she's in that, so if oh. Liz were here, she would have had I, let's, thoughts. Let's re- reference the fun things. I oh, mean, okay. Come on. So, not that. <laughs> um, yeah, she also was in Smilf which is very similar to almost in real life. She, uh, It's the guy who gets with, and then eventually Teresa Palmer. So it's a very, oh, yes, this blonde Australian person. Yeah, uh-huh, got it. Yeah, I remember when we were, Smilf was on or something, and you'd pointed that out to me. I'm yeah, like, well, oh, it was the mi- similarities to real life. It was mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so uh, do you have uh, some other fun characters in there? Um, it's so hard for me. I just want to talk about the first one. But anyway... Uh, Max Greenfield, he is fun. He also does not get a ton of time. That's really their focus is Samara and like the celebrities, her world. And then you also get a ton of time with Eugenio as the valet, like his family life. Mm-hmm. You know, he's divorced, he has a kid, you know, kind of what's going on with the wife. And, you know, because the jealousy angle is one that's recurring between both. But uh, as opposed to just in the first one, it almost seems like it's a childhood friend that they maybe never even dated, and he's just going to propose, and she's like, "What? You're like, uh, you're like my best friend. You're, you know, like, uh, uh, whatever, like your neighbor boy." And uh, whereas this one, it's his ex-wife, so mm-hmm. very different, though similar, playing the jealousy card. Got it. But then you also get. Uh, it's funny because I actually watched the new one first, and then went back and watched the old one, and I was like, "Oh man, there's just not as much family in the old one." It was like. There is family. It's all comedy. Whereas the new one, it's like all kind of... Real. I mean... Or like more sentimental. They they use a lot of comedic moments, but it's like, oh, his older mother who something happens to. And like, oh, you know, this... Well, yeah, my younger sister, but like, that's why I left school. So like help support my family and to help support my sister. And, you know, this ex-wife with the kid. That feels different than just, you know, a childhood friend you want to date or, or marry. So those are... They really focus in on this too, which... It's way more time than than the first one. I am very intrigued. I am excited to watch it and might want to watch the other versions. How the, hard do you think it would be to follow the French one? Uh, For you? Very hard. <laughs> Is it fast? I mean, it sounds fast. Mm, it's not crazy fast. Okay. Um, It might still be a little tough. Um, Look, as long as I can pause it so I can read things, then I might be okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. I love the first one, so I'm like, we need you have to see that one. I don't even see the second one. It's up to you, but you got to see the first one. Right. I mean, it's three dollars right now, but <laughs> Ooh, well, wait a minute. I don't but know. But you if do I can. also get Carl Lagerfeld, who has sadly passed. But the top model, you know, she does a model show, mm-hmm. which they don't really say. Though eventually, you see on the floor, which I don't think I, I thought I hadn't noticed until the next scene where you see it behind them. But the CC for Coco Chanel. Oh. Uh, and they have Carl there. You're like, wow, this is kind of real. So yeah, that's that's in the first one's corner. All right, oh, all right, pro. all right. Uh, although sadly, similarly, the matriarch in the movie, uh, the 
new one, Carmen Salinas. She has since passed since the movie has come out. Like, I guess a full year ago, but after shooting, but yes, so quite sad. Oh, that's sad. Although I also feel like you would recognize the one of the they they you know all this cheating and there's detectives and blah blah blah. They the detectives they're a little funnier and the, the, the first one he's kind of like almost not a nothing character but he's uh he's pretty bland. The second one they both were going for a little heavier for comedy. One of them uh, so it's Ravi Patel and then the second one John Piricelli. Yeah. I, I was like, just looking yeah. at him from Barry. Oh, that's right. I was like, I don't know. What where are you I know thinking? Him. I'm not thinking oh, okay. of anything. I yeah. was just like, no, I know who you are. You're funny. I like you. Yeah, but he's yes. great in Barry, a detective in so, Barry. Yeah. Hilarious. This one, not quite. He's a private detective. So oh, okay. Different. So not a police in yes. Barry. He's a police officer yeah. or a police detective or whatever. But so, I love Ravi Patel as yeah, well. Yeah, he's, he's quite fun. Great. It's interesting because he plays the like more together of the detectives. <laughs> uh, so he doesn't get quite the opportunity for comedy, but still good. All right. Okay. Did you say that you were going to do two things? Those are the two things. Oh, it was the combo two things. Yeah, it was two okay. of the same things. Yeah. It was a crossover two things. All right. Well, great. I'm excited about watching a bunch of movies now. When am I going to do that? Oh, my God. Never. All Perfect. Right. <laughs> Wait, you sleep. Uh, Just see, watch Palm Springs again. Yeah. I think that's the choice. God, it was so funny when you were like, you've never seen Palm Springs? What's happening? Get we, And I, then didn't we watch it like that day? Or like that weekend or something. There's somebody I know that I just, like a friend that hadn't seen it. And I'm like, ah! Because that was, you know, six months or like later that same year, but a little bit after. Mm-hmm. This is like now two years later. You're like, how have you, what are, what are you doing with their life? How do you not know about Palm Springs? You need to watch Palm Springs right now. Yeah. All right. Okay. So well, then we can wrap it up. Okay. So uh, Palm Springs. No, I'm just kidding. That's not. <laughs> you know, it's funny how a bunch of other things end up getting talked about. But anyway. Uh, okay. So I did Outer Range, which is on Amazon Prime Video, and I also did Made for Love. Nice. Which I thought was great. On HBO, right? On HBO Max. And, of course, Hacks, which is in progress. Right. Also HBO Max. Okay, Ed, go. And then I watched Vacation Friends on Hulu. Can't wait. Gonna watch it. I, on Hulu, also watched The Valet. And then I recommend the original, because that was the remake, which is available for rental, digital rental. Yep. Well, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe and recommend to family and friends. And also you can join our Patreon, become a patron. We would really appreciate that. It's very easy to do. And that's where we talk about all sorts of things that we you know, didn't yeah, love, which is kind of fun. Positive responses. Yeah, I think that's very fun to listen to and also to avoid things. It's also a lot of fun to do that yeah. podcast. <laughs> anyway, okay, so thank you for listening to what, what we, we are, are watching. watching.